Hello students, in this video we'll see an example of finding a vector potential of a solenoidal vector field. Let's be given the vector field V. of x, y, z, which is negative 2 plus 2z, 1 minus 2x, and 1 plus y. Let's find a vector field w such that, such that v is equal to the curl of w. Okay? This is only possible when the vector field v is solenoidal. So to check that v is solenoidal, we'll do the following. First check to see if V is solenoidal. Solenoidal just means that divergence is equal to zero. Good, so let's do the divergence of V. So what is the divergence of V? The divergence of V is going to be what? It's going to be the X derivative of negative 2 plus 2Z plus the Y derivative of 1 minus 2X plus the z derivative of 1 plus y, and we can clearly see that all those terms are zero. So the divergence is zero, so this is a solenoidal vector field. Now what we can do is we know that these, these w's are unique up to a gradient, so we're going to assume a special form of this w. We're going to uh, try w to be w1, w2, and zero. And the reason I put a zero there is because I can, I can construct a gradient vector field which eliminates that last component. And so if we do this, then what is the curl of this vector field W? The curl of the vector field W is I, J, K, D by DX, D by DY, D by DZ of W1, W2, and 0. And so what will this be? The I entry of this thing is going to be negative, negative partial W2, partial Z. The J entry is going to be what? The J entry is going to be positive partial W1, partial Z. And the K entry is going to be partial W2, partial X, minus partial W1, partial Y. So I need a couple things to be true. So if this vector field is going to have this as its, um, as its curl, then what do I need? I need this term over here to be negative 2 plus 2Z. I need this term over here to be 1 minus 2X. I need this term over here to be 1 plus Y. So let's see how we can cook that up. So the first equation would tell me that, well, let's look, let's look at this first equation over here. That would tell me that partial W2, partial Z, would have to be what? This is negative, so I'll put the negative over there. 2 minus 2Z. That's easy to construct such a W2. If I do a partial integral with respect to W, a partial integral with respect to W would say that W2 of X, Y, and Z, doing a partial Z integral will give me a 2Z minus Z squared, plus a function that depends on x and y, which we don't know yet. So f of x, y, some function we don't know. Likewise, I can take this equation over here, partial w1, partial w1, partial z, has to be equal to what? Has to be equal to 1 minus 2x, 1 minus 2x. And again, I'll do a partial z integral of this, and I'll get that w of x, y, w1 of x, y, z, is equal to what? Is equal to a z minus 2x, z, plus some function g of x and y. It depends on g of x and y. And now I use my final condition to test the, test the consistency of this. So now I need what? I need partial w2 partial x. I'm going to do the x derivative of this thing. So the x derivative of partial w2 partial x minus partial w1 partial y will be equal to what? Partial w2 partial x is going to be what? Just f prime partial f partial x, partial f partial x. And then partial w1 partial y is just going to be what? It's just going to be part minus partial g partial y. Partial g partial y with a negative sign. This has to be 1 plus y. And there's lots of ways for me to satisfy this equation. In particular, what I could do is I could match the f and the 1 and the gy with y. So if I do that, one choice that will work is I can choose f of xy just to be x. Then this x derivative is clearly 1. And if I can choose g of xy to be what? g of x, y to be negative y squared over 2, that will be a choice such that the y derivative of this thing will be a negative y, which will turn into a positive y. Great, so I just found my f and my g, and there's many other choices that work too. So now we're at the stage where we can write down our vector potential. So it's true now that we have our vector field v is equal to the curl of what? Is equal to the curl of my w1 function is what? My w1 is a z minus 2xz 
plus g of x, so that's going to be a minus y squared over 2. And then I'll have a w2, which is going to be a 2z, 2z, and then minus z squared, and then plus f, and we found that it was equal to x, then comma 0. And again, this is true up to gradients, so I can also plug in, I can take this, this is my vector field w. If this works, then it's also true that v is the curl of this vector field we chose w plus any gradient vector field, right? Because the curl of a gradient is equal to zero. So you can, you can add on any gradient to this, and it will remain that the fact that the v is the curl of w plus whatever that gradient vector field you chose was. Thank you very much.